it going everyone? Welcome to Asian Filmness. My name is Ray and I love movies. And the movie I'm going to be talking about today is Kiseki Anohi no Sobito. Kiseki is a 2017 Japanese movie and it's directed by Kaneshige Atsushi. Kiseki is a biopic of the hit Japanese pop group called Green and it stars a bunch of folks all led by Matsuzaku Tori and Suda Masaki. Now some background information on Green before we dive into this review. Uh, they're a big hit in Japan and they're known for combining a whole bunch of sounds and musical genres into their music. But one of the most unique things about the band Green is that they never actually show their faces, not in any of the promotional work or CD covers or art or even on TV and their whole purpose for doing so is so that they can separate their lives as professional musicians with their day jobs which are careers as dentists and that's completely understandable you know you don't want fast to bombard your clinic you just want to carry on and do your job as you need to now the title of this movie Kiseki it's a reference to their seventh single and most possibly their most successful one after all it was entered in the Guinness Book of World Records as a best-selling download single in Japan in 2009 honestly I don't know if they still hold that record but you know that award is well deserved because the single is really catchy and as for the subtitle Anohi no Sobito basically it means a Sobito from that day and Sobito is quoted as being a word made up by the band members of Green and the word is appropriate to the story as it's about uh, the origins of the band as each of the members struggle to decide whether to pursue their dreams as to becoming professional musicians or to pursue their careers as dentists and so let's talk a little briefly about the story of Kiseki. The story starts off with Jin who is played by Matsuzaka Tori and at the start of the story he's struggling to try to make a name for himself and his band which plays heavy metal music. This is of course against the wishes of his very strict father who himself is a doctor and he calls playing music professionally as basically a big waste of time and he's never going to get anywhere with that dream. And as Jin is struggling with his band meanwhile his little brother Hide who is played by Suda Masaki is studying to become a dentist. He's able to get into a good university and he befriends three folks who will in the future end up being the members of Green. And when they first meet, they do typically what any folks hanging out would do, you know, uh, play some basketball, hang out at a cafe and just chat. But then suddenly they realize they all have a particular love for music or even experience playing musical instruments. So they decide to get together once in a while and just jam. And they start making music as a hobby and you know, they really just have fun with it. But then he then one day goes to Jean for some help in helping arrange a backtrack for their song. And then after a while Jin obliges to producing music for them and then he realizes that his brother and his friends have this potential for something really big. And so Jin offers to be their producer and really pushes them so that way they can make Green a big thing. But then telling your little brother to pursue music is one thing. But then having him balance his studies to be a dentist in addition to writing music for his band, it's, it's a, it takes a lot of toll on Hide. Thus is the story of the origins of what is now the successful band Green. So let's talk a little bit about the things I enjoyed about Kiseki. To some Kiseki, really simply, the movie will make you smile. And if you ever have been a fan of Green and their music, you know, their music is really meant to make you smile and to uplift you. And that's what this movie does. And it's really fitting, especially for a movie that portrays the lives of the band. Like there's so many moments that will make you smile, so many moments that will make you laugh. It's just really enjoyable from beginning to end. And on top of that, the two lead actors, Suda Masaki and Matsuzaka Tori, are phenomenal in their roles. They are both showing that they are deserving of the spotlight that is really shining on them right now as two of the young, hot actors to keep your eyes on. Like if you've seen their work from the past few years, they really have been putting a lot of really amazing work. And you know, as a fan of Japanese tokusatsu superheroes, you know, it's really nice to see these two actors who started from those roots of Kamen Rider and Super Sentai grow to become the huge stars they are today. But you know, don't want to brag too much, but we Tokusatsu fans knew about Suda Masaki and Masasaka Tori way before the mainstream ever did. But yeah, the two actors, they really made their characters really likable and really relatable. And that's really important for the story because one of the core elements of the narrative is the family dynamic. I mean, you really see the way the family reacts to the brother's decisions on pursuing music. Like, you know, the father, he's not having any of this waste of time, you know, playing music. He wants his sons to pursue serious studies and to make a serious career out of themselves. And who is really cute is the mother. She really supports her sons 
and you know, just anything that the family does. Another thing I really enjoyed is that the central narrative was split really perfectly amongst the two leads. You know, at first it felt that one character was gonna be more focused than the other, but actually, you know, when you look back at the movie as a whole, the amount of time divided between each of the two lead characters was pretty even. And it gave you plenty of time to really like the main characters and for you to want to cheer them on as they struggle for success. And when the film is dramatic, it really pulls you in. You know, it's really moving during those dramatic moments. The dialogue and the characters, you know, what I really like, they were written so that way they were naturally funny and they naturally made you smile. You know, they didn't try to pull off any weird gags just for cheap laughs, but you know, everything was just really grounded. But, you know, well, hold on, wait, let me take that back for a second. There was that one part where the dad got so mad at Masazaka Tori's character that he was about to cut him with a katana. That was, that was pretty funny though. This led to many funny and, you know, even cute moments throughout the movie. And one of my favorite parts, and you know how I mentioned earlier that they try to keep their identities as dentists and musicians separate? When their music started to really catch on with fans, and, you know, it was starting to get plays on the radio and people were buying their CDs, uh, there was this moment where the the members of Green were just walking down the street and they happened to be passing by this group of fans listening to the music through their earphones and singing along. And as they passed by, they kind of noticed that these fans were singing their music. So they kind of slyly just started hiding their faces either with their caps or with their hands. And it was just funny. And of course, obviously, one of the things I enjoyed about Kiseki is the music. You know, I was a fan of Green back when I listened to Japanese music. You know, honestly, I don't really listen to any Japanese music nowadays. But when I did, Green was one of those bands I listened to and it was nice to hear their music once again. Like the music weren't just the original versions with the uh, lead actors just lip syncing. No, it was actually them singing the songs. And you know, they actually sang the songs quite well. And that further increased my appreciation for the cast. You know, I can go on and on about all the things I love about Kiseki, but you know, I guess I do have to speak about the bads of this movie. And you know, as far as bads are concerned, there really weren't a whole too many I could really think of without being too nitpicky. I mean, one of the only things I can think of right off the top of my head is that it felt like the other the three members of Green, Naviso, and Kuni were kind of just downplayed. And those three characters, they did pretty much what they were written to do. They contributed to the plot of this movie as they were meant to. And you know, the minor roles that these characters played of in the context of the story of this movie it was actually understandable because the focus of the story were the two brothers, Jean and Hide. And the film did a very good job at keeping its focus on the two brothers without going off course. Now, another thing that, you know, this is just nitpicking here, but the film made it seem like Hiseki was their second or even third single, can't really remember. But in actuality, Kiseki was their seventh single. And you know, as expected in these biopics, a lot of bits of information were changed just for the sake of being workable in the movie. Some of these things include the locations. You know, according to Wikipedia, uh, the members of Green met in Fukushima. But in the movie, you know, I could have sworn that they met up in Yokohama. For those of you who are unfamiliar with Japanese geography, they are quite far from each other. But you know, like I said, these kinds of changes are kind of expected for these kinds of movies. Plus, it'd be kind of pointless to protect the identity of the members of Green if you go out and point to where they really live and work. But you know, other than those little bits of nitpicking, I really didn't have anything bad to say about Kiseki. I thoroughly enjoyed it. And so the bottom line of Kiseki, it's a movie that will call to you if you are a fan of underdog stories, if you're a fan of stories about folks who pursue their dreams despite the objections of onlookers, and if you like movies about family and their drama. The story is so relatable, the characters are really likable, and you know, the chemistry that all the characters have with each other, it's just, just wonderful to watch. I recommend this movie for fans of Green, old and new, and definitely would be fans too. And definitely recommend if you are a fan of Suda Masaki and or Masazaka Tori and you want to see them sing a bunch of tunes. Anyways, those are my thoughts about the movie Kiseki Anohi no Sobito. What did you guys think? Whatever your thoughts are, leave a comment below and don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to Asian Filmers for more reviews and discussions of Asian films. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter and if you subscribe to our email newsletter, you can receive a free copy of our ebook, The 108 Asian Films for New Fans to Watch. Once again, my name is Ray. You can find me on Twitter at RayMaru555. And yeah, that's about it, everyone. All right, guys, I'm about to watch some more movies. I'll be back soon, yeah? Promise.